powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys coming up that tough loss at Green Bay last week. Yesterday had to travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. One of the better teams in the NFL this year. Got an 8-1 and one record going in yesterday's game. Opening drive, Minnesota Kirk Cousins back to pass. And look out, here comes Micah Parsons. Got him and a fumble. Cowboys recover. Cowboys had to settle for a field goal, though. Up 3-0 late in the first quarter. Game tied at 3. Zeke Elliott handoff. Boom. Touchdown. That finished off a 10-play drive. Dallas up 10-3 after one. Second quarter, under two to play. Dak is going to just kind of wing it out there to Tony Pollard. Wide open. Check out the block he gets from his tight end, Dalton Schultz, on the sideline right there. And gone. 30 yards. Cowboys lead it 23-3 at halftime. Third quarter. Cowboys not wasting any time. Dak deep down the sidelines. And Pollard is wide open in stride. 68-yard touchdown. That's two for him through the air. Cowboys up 30-3. Pollard led the Cowboys to rushing and receiving. Vikings first drive in the second half going nowhere. Demarcus Lawrence with the sack. Three plays later, it's Cousins going down again. Dante Fowler with the sack. Vikings are forced to punt. Never really got close to the Cowboys end zone. Cowboys score again on the next drive. Zeke for the end zone. That's his second touchdown of the day. That kept off a five-play, 41-yard drive. Still over eight minutes left in the quarter. Dallas racked up 151 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Dak threw for 276 yards, two touchdowns. He only missed three passes. He was like 22 of 25. Kirk Cousins sacked seven times. Here is your final from Minnesota. 40-3. Cowboys get the win. Dallas now 7-3 after the game. It was all about their response to that loss last week. Seven days ago in that locker room, we, we talked about, hey, this, this game will help us in the long run if, if we let it and just learn from it. And I think that's clearly was part of our lesson. After last week, I had a good week of prep and just uh, wanted to come in and um, set the standard and the expectation that, that I've talked about that, that we have for ourselves. And just as you said, just being able to go and get points on, on the first seven drives, honestly, uh, was just staying in the moment. I feel like, um, you know, we kind of found our formula, you know, just, you know, running the ball, pounding the defense, uh, dominating, you know, on all phases of the game. You know, just trying to slow the game down and, and let our defense go out there and do what they do. This is how it should be every week. You know, um, there shouldn't be no gap. We should play sound football. We we show them we're capable of it. We flash it. We got to consistently do it. Consistency wins championships. So if we able to do that, I mean, we could go real far. All right. So now it's just a few days off before they take on the New York Football Giants in AT and T Stadium. That's the Thanksgiving Day special at 3.30. The good news for the Cowboys, they scored so many points yesterday that a lot of the starters got to rest a lot of that fourth quarter. So hopefully that'll help going into this game at 3.30 on Thursday. Hey, the Spurs closed out their five-game West Coast road trip last night. Not good against the Lakers. The Spurs' fifth straight loss. L.A. gets it. 123 to 92. LeBron James didn't play in that one. San Antonio now 6 and 12. Like we said before, we knew this was going to happen probably, but we didn't realize they're going to get blown out so many times. So they got to tighten things up a little bit. So they're home for a while. New Orleans on Wednesday. And then look at this Friday and Saturday. It's the Lakers again. All those games at seven o'clock at the AT&T Center. Positive energy, positive energy. <laughs> the COVID-19 pandemic changed the way we work. Now more companies are creating remote positions, but that leaves an opening for scammers. How to keep from becoming a victim. And new today at five, these twins are more than just cute. They're already pretty famous. Uh, they broke a new record the day they were born. That story today at five on inter after entertainment tonight. Look at them, so cute. Now to a new warning about a scam promising people work from home opportunities. As ABC's Rebecca Jarvis explains, it cost one woman nearly $5,000. I just felt absolutely and completely powerless. I, I was devastated. For Kansas City resident Miranda Owens, a simple job search turned into a financial nightmare. I was really banking on finding a job because I had looked through hundreds of different job listings at that point. The 24 year old says she was scammed out of nearly $5,000 after answering an inquiry for a remote position, saying that within moments of the interview, she was hired. At the end of that interview, she told me, 
basically, you did really well during the interview. We think that you would be a really good candidate for us. You are hired. Miranda says she did her research, looking up the company and its employees through employment networks. Everything seemed to check out. So I looked them up. I looked up the people who were contacting me. So I felt reassured. Miranda says the would-be employer quickly turned over instructions, sending a check to deposit in her bank account to cover office supplies, but then requesting she send the money back using a third-party service. When the transfer didn't go through, Miranda sent the payment in Bitcoin. She says only later did her bank notify her that the original check from the supposed employer turned out to be fraudulent. The bank pulled that amount out of her account leaving her short of almost $5,000. I just started bawling. I felt like my trust had been completely shattered. My trust in um, all of these online platforms. Even though she's embarrassed for falling for the scam, she says she hopes her story helps others. Having my story out there hopefully will prevent a lot more people to fall victim to this as well. Former President Donald Trump says he has no interest in returning to Twitter. This comes after a slim majority voted in favor of reinstating the former U.S. president who was banned from the social media service for inciting violence. Twitter owner Elon Musk put up the poll over the weekend. Just over 15, Twitter, 15 million Twitter users voted in the poll with 51.8% voting in favor of reinstatement. Trump said he would stick with the new platform, Truth Social, the app developed by his media and technology group startup. He claims he has better user engagement than Twitter and was doing phenomenally well. Musk first said it in May that he planned to reverse the ban on Trump. The U.S. is experiencing a shortage of a drug commonly used to treat bacterial infections in children. According to the FDA, the drug is in high demand because kids are getting sick from a variety of illnesses right now. Three of the top four makers of the antibiotic, amoxicillin, are reporting supply issues nationwide. Amoxicillin is prescribed for many illnesses, including ear and throat infections, and it comes in several forms. Children generally take the liquid form of the drug, which is reportedly where most of the shortages are occurring. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says it's working with pharmaceutical companies to fix the problem. A new therapy to delay the onset of type 1 diabetes has been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on the therapy and how it may help patients. It's being called an historic moment for those suffering from type 1 diabetes. The first ever therapy to delay the disease is now FDA approved for patients. We've never had any treatment to do that, uh, despite testing many, many different things that have all not worked. Type 1 diabetes is a genetic disease where a person's pancreas doesn't make insulin or won't make enough. The new monoclonal antibody will be marketed under the brand name Zealed. It comes in a single 14-day dose of infusions that each lasts 30 to 60 minutes. On average, the, the delay of development of type 1 was two years, but there were those that went longer than that. And as we get more and more data, this may prevent the development even longer than two years, which is really exciting. The therapy is thought to work by turning down the body's misdirected attack on its own insulin producing cells, protecting those cells may buy patients more time before they become dependent on insulin to manage their condition. Imagine, you know, a nine year old kid with diabetes that has to have their finger pricked multiple times a day and receive multiple insulin injections. Sometimes their parents chasing them around to do this and now think of not having to do that for two whole years. And this therapy is thought to be just the beginning in the fight against type 1 diabetes. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. NASA's Orion spacecraft passed about 80 miles above the surface of the moon today. It's a monumental moment in the mission designed to test the U.S. Space Agency's ability to one day return astronauts to the moon. The lunar flyby is expected to travel more than 40,000 miles past the far side of the moon. That's the furthest a spacecraft intended to carry humans has ever traveled. However, the spacecraft is not carrying any astronauts. This mission launched last Wednesday morning when NASA Space launched 
launch system rockets sent the Orion capsule to space. It's all part of the NASA's Artemis program. It aims to eventually establish a lunar outpost that can permanently host astronauts for the first time in history in the hopes of one day paving a route to Mars. That's how we like him. Our space is full of clouds and rain and cold air. <laughs> Started off about 41 this morning. We made it up to about 44. Ooh. Yeah, big warm up, right? <laughs> uh, cold out there. It's dreary. It's rainy. And the rain's still coming in. So the radar shows, yeah, we still got those light returns that funnel in from the south and west. And while we're seeing less and less of sort of that moderate rain, we're still going to see some of these light sprinkly showers continuing into the afternoon. The more significant stuff has kind of pushed east over towards LaGrange and up towards the Austin area. But as long as we keep seeing a little bit of development out here in Medina County, these showers are going to funnel through San Antonio. So we're still going to use windshield wipers. There's still going to be some puddling on the roads. And that's going to make for some slow traffic and spots, I would imagine. Let's talk rain chances for the rest of the week. So we've got our rain chances today. They drop off a little bit tomorrow and Wednesday. And then we're going to pick them back up Thursday and Friday as our next storm system moves in. Question will be, will we get some thunderstorms on Thursday? Possible. Right now, again, just a 30% chance. Not going to be a washout for Thanksgiving. At least that's not the way it looks right now. But we will watch on Friday for additional showers as this storm system kind of lags or uh, sits over West Texas. It's not until the weekend that we finally, finally clear out and get some warmer temperatures. Right now, 41, Bernie Stage, 43, Rio Medina, 46 in Castroville, 43 in Seguin, 45 out in Gonzales. In the case of that 12 hour forecast, well, the temperatures just don't budge at all. 45, 46 maybe this afternoon. And then temperatures will hold steady overnight. Rain chances do start to taper off down to about 20% as we get into the overnight period and into tomorrow. As we said, Tuesday and Wednesday, mainly just cloudy with a few sprinkly showers here and there. We've, we're getting some more clarity on this Thanksgiving forecast, getting models in as we speak. And we're going to talk more about that Thanksgiving forecast coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Thanks, Justin. Something Bob Dylan wrote just made a lot of money, and it doesn't involve music. Hello everyone, these are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Bankrupt crypto exchange FTX owes more than $3 billion to their 50 biggest creditors. That's all according to redacted court papers filed over the weekend. 10 of the 1 million creditors have claims of more than $100 million each. The FTX is liable for $9 billion of that debt, but reportedly has less than a billion dollars in assets. Meanwhile, Hyundai is hoping to attract new EV buyers with a new way to charge up at home. Hyundai Home blends solar panels and energy storage for electric vehicle charging. The program will help electric vehicle owners in 16 states find affordable ways to keep their vehicles charged. South Korean car maker says their goal is democratize EV adoption. And the Walt Disney Company has tapped former CEO Bob Iger to return as CEO. His return comes two years after Bob Chapek took over as his successor. Disney saying in a statement that Iger has deep respect for Disney's top leadership team and is admired by the company's employees worldwide. Hey, I'm Nancy Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Love letters from one of the most celebrated songwriters earned a pretty penny. The 42 notes a teenage Bob Dylan wrote decades ago to his then girlfriend, Barbara Ann Hewitt, sold for nearly $670,000 on Friday by RR Auction. The Boston-based business says Dylan, who had yet to change his last name from Zimmerman, wrote about his future aspirations of stardom as well as expressing feelings for Hewitt. Hewitt met Dylan in high school, and according to RR Auction, they had their first date on New Year's Eve, 1957. Hewitt held on to the letters until she died in 2020. Dylan, whose hits include Like a Rolling Stone, Mr. Tambourine Man, and Tangled Up in Blue, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back in 1988. That's incredible. I mean, those love letters actually turned into song. I well, that's a good point. Yeah. Probably a few of them. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Uh, well, weather-wise, guys, we know it's been a chilly day today. 43 so far the high. 41 was the low this morning. So we've only moved about 2 degrees. I mean, the temperature is just not budging at all today. Averages are 70 and 48. Records are 88 and 26. So it can get pretty hot this time of year. That was set back in 2007. But that is not in the cards this week. Another look at that seven-day forecast is coming up.
guess this is a good day with all the kids home for what Disney Plus and Netflix and all those other streaming. Yeah, out they're there. watching Frozen multiple times oh. today. And Ganto, all the Disney favorites. We were just talking. You got to yeah. limit the screen time. Yeah, two yeah. hours max, right? Yeah. So then, what do they do all the other time? <laughs> Build <the> forts. <laughs> Legos. 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 Well, those are fun. Okay. A little forts. There's lots of like. Thanksgiving activities too. Yeah, so. you got to you got to get creative. <laughs> they have those magnet blocks now. That those are fun too. Are, That's cool. You know what I'm talking about. I yeah. think I have more fun with them than my kids do. I'm yeah. building <laughs> castles and stuff. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, you got to find stuff to do when it's uh, when the weather's like this. And we go outside for you. Cloudy, a little bit rainy. Those roads are still wet. We're still getting light showers tracking through uh, the airport area. 43 degrees right now. 44 Stinson, 43 Kelly, 43 over at Randolph. So you got uh, pretty uniform temperatures across the city. And you see this the shield of rain here. As, as we uh, look across southeast Texas, Houston to Austin to San Antonio, that's where the rain is. That will continue to push off into Louisiana. We're starting to see things lighten up just a little bit, but we're still getting development back here to the west of San Antonio. So that means the rain's going to hold on for at least another couple of hours. It just won't be as maybe heavy as it was earlier. And by the way, there is some clearing going on. So just north of Del Rio, the sun pops out. We're not going to see that today. That clearing line does not make it to San Antonio. We stay underneath the clouds and underneath these showers. And uh, right now the live radar tells the story. Everything's pretty light here, but moving off to the north and east and showers are still sitting over parts of San Antonio. Right now it's the north side getting some of that light rain and we can zoom in a little bit closer and show you exactly where the rain is. Now it's moving pretty quick and uh, it has added up over the last three days added up to some decent rainfall. We're up to about seven tenths of an inch at the airport, by the way, which is great. Uh, but you see these uh, pockets of light rain moving through uh, moving through Leon Springs over to Timberwood Park and Stone Oak and along 281. Well, let's look at the numbers. 43 Kerrville, 45 New Braunfels, 45 Gonzales, 45 Pleasanton, 45 in Hondo. Yeah, you get the idea there. Uh, low to mid 40s here across San Antonio, too. And there's the wind chill. Uh, the winds are fairly light, but there's just enough there that there is a little bit of a wind chill today. Uh, we don't expect winds to be all that strong this afternoon. 40% chance of rain through about 4 o'clock, 46 degrees. That's about as warm as we're going to go. And then 30% chance is going to the evening hours a little less of a chance overnight tonight. And that goes for tomorrow and Wednesday, too, with uh, the rain chances kind of tapering off a little bit. And that's what this computer model shows. By 5 o'clock, a couple light showers, but this is starting to push east. And then tonight, not much there. This does show a few more showers trying to develop by tomorrow morning and a few more around tomorrow afternoon. I, anything we see tomorrow is going to be kind of few and far between and light, but there likely will be some action on the radar. Now I want to fast forward to Thursday. This is Thanksgiving Day, 7 o'clock in the morning. We've got another storm system that will be pulling in, and I mentioned there was a lot of uncertainty here between the computer models, but we just got another round of computer models in, and we're starting to get some agreements. So I'm getting a little more confident here as to how this is going to play out. But I do think we get some showers, maybe a thunderstorm, especially early on Thanksgiving. This is around 5 o'clock, shows some of the rain kind of maybe sweeping east a little bit. And then as we head into Friday, this storm system is still going to be around and wants to generate some more rain on Friday. It's not until the weekend that this would finally clear out. And yes, this does want to produce a little bit of wintry weather on the backside of it. Probably uh, not here, but uh, up Texas Panhandle, West Texas, you'll need to watch for that. And then as I mentioned, this would finally move out Saturday and Sunday, give us some clearing and we'd finally warm up some. But that's a little bit of a change to the forecast if you've been watching the last couple days. So 20% chance Tuesday, Wednesday, but now a 30% chance Thursday, Friday. If things continue to play out the way they are, we may raise those rain chances a little bit. Stay tuned for Adam Kasky this evening and he'll have a full update on that forecast, but could be a little bit wet for Thanksgiving, guys. Thanks, Justin. A museum tells the story of local people who've made a difference in our community, how it paints a picture of the past. Coming up. A local man is making sure part of San Antonio's history is never forgotten. He is doing more than just writing it down. Charles Williams has a museum full of memorabilia to tell the story of African Americans in San Antonio. Our Katrina Weber recently got a chance to take that journey through time. The beginning of the tour will start right here. From the front door to the back walls, there's a story here that Charles Williams wants to show and tell.
Dr. Heed, who was a significant city council person. Our first black fireman was Mr. Sullivan. Can't say enough about the Iceman, George Gervin. He is a walking who's who of San Antonio, and now he finally has a chance to share it all. Just a lot of history you'll find here that I don't think you'll find anywhere else. The emphasis at the new Williams Historical Museum is on African-American history, local people who've made a difference. And these people laid the groundwork for us to be here today doing what we're doing and enjoying some of the benefits. Through words, photos, and his personal property, he paints a picture of the past. Uh, when we go into this little room, we call stepping back into time. Some displays are more personal than others. This is the scale that we weighed the cotton on right here. Williams left behind picking cotton in Granger, Texas for cutting hair in San Antonio in 1957. Impressed by local black business leaders at the time, he became an entrepreneur. Three years ago, he bought a crumbling historic church in the 500 block of Montana to fulfill a decades-long dream. I felt a, a, a profound need to do this, not just for me, but for the community. A community that includes civic and civil rights leaders, artists, and athletes. Alongside all of these accomplishments are reminders of the painful past, all of this part of the African-American experience in San Antonio. Williams hopes all of it will impact the future. We're very proud of it, and I think it's going to be here for a long time. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. I bet there's some interesting items in that museum. That was a great story yeah. by Katrina. Check that out. All right, Mike and Jen, they may have some ideas for the kids who are stuck at home. Oh, money. they're back with well, the money. Yeah. My, yeah. my kids are stuck at home. Money. <laughs> money, they love money too, right? The kids. Yeah, <laughs> sure, exactly. We're going to tell you how you can win $500 and maybe the grand no, prize. 10000 Yeah, I'll tell you all yes. about that. Also, we have Leo Davila here from Sticks and Stone, and we're talking turkey leftovers, but we are elevating them, yeah, right? Not absolutely. just an ordinary grilled cheese. What's in it? So grilled cheese, and then coming up, we have two ingredients that's going to take it over the top and press your gas for years to come, I promise. So I'm starting this right now. All right, I'm going to add this. And and just more cheese. Yes. We're going to make it into a French, what do you call it? <laughs> it's called a croque madame. Croque madame. Croque madame. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you on that one. So, all right, speaking of great sandwiches, got a big party coming up here just after Thanksgiving or going into the Christmas holidays. Ooh, look at that. Look at these beautiful mm. sandwiches from Marco Polo, and we are going to show how to make the ultimate yeah, sandwich. I think this we have a challenge coming up. Long, yes. Yes, I'm excited about that. Also, actor Jesse Borrego is in the house from the American Indians in Texas at the Spanish Colonial Missions. They have their Pecan Harvest Fest coming up. We'll tell you all about it. Okay. How many, how many Skittles are in here? Can you guess? A little, little fun family game to play with the kids. Yes. Yeah, all right. Stephanie Pina Frost has some great ideas on things and mm -hmm. something you get really, really, really extra messy about. So. Plus, all the places that are open on Thanksgiving. Maybe you don't want to do the cooking. That's okay. By the way, we're going to let you know which places are open. But then you don't have to leftovers to turn into the oh, cloth yeah. in the bag. <laughs> Say it again. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> that and more coming up. Welcome back. We're still in the mid-40s. Rain still coming down. We'll see some showers off and on into the afternoon. Rain chances do taper off tonight. Temperatures get a little bit warmer. 54 tomorrow, 61 on Wednesday. And we have those rain chances now. Thanksgiving into Friday. Look for some isolated to scattered showers and storms. It's not until the weekend that things clear out. Guys. Nice. It's PJ weather. <laughs> it is. Yeah, get back in bed. Um, so let me think. Jen is counting money and Mike's counting Skittles. Is that how this works on SA Live? Something like that. Mm -hmm. It starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, no. We are counting on tasting this sandwich. Yes. Look at this baby. Yes, that is kind of sort of a grilled cheese, but oh. With Not your leftovers, yes. Yes, indeed. Hello and happy Monday, everybody. Can you believe Thanksgiving I is know. only three yes. days away. And we're not counting calories, right? No, no not, not at this all. week. Throw them out the Mike window. I'm Mike Osterhage. She is Jen <laughs> Tobias Trusky. That's right. Are you excited about Thanksgiving? It's what most people are thinking about. And we want to know, mm -hmm. what is your favorite Thanksgiving pie? Me, pecan. Wait, pecan. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Pecan. 
With ice yeah. cream, yeah. Okay, I, well, I also make a pumpkin cream cheese pie. Oh, ooh, that that's, sounds good, too. And it's the Paula Deen recipe, by yeah. the way. I'm yeah. not going to claim it to be mine. That one's really good, too. Okay, I can keep going. Sorry. Le Leo was nodding his head over there going, yeah, that, that, that sounds know, really good, Leo too. Knows, so yes. Let us know what your favorite pie is. If you have extra pie, you can bring it by. We will happily sample it for you if you if you want, or even leftovers, you know, coming up after that. So. That's right. It's time to activate feast mode. Families are getting ready to spend hours preparing one meal, so you definitely don't want to waste all, or you don't want all that work to go to waste. No, indeed. And our good friend, Chef Leo Davila from on, Sticks and Stone is here and grilled cheese, but boy, this is not the ordinary just a couple of American cheese and a couple of slices of bread. No, no, it? I mean, you know, everybody grew up grilled cheese. The reason we came up with this recipe with my family is it's something simple and identifiable, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, you're stuck Wednesday prepping, Thursday cooking, trying to hit the table at one o'clock, six o'clock. Yes. Last thing you want to do is the next day just think about leftovers. So this can actually be done while you're prepping or while you're getting out the turkey and the ham for your for oh, your wow. yeah for so your So make feast. those in advance. Yeah, make put them, them in aside. advance. Put them in mm -hmm. a, put them to the side, and then mm -hmm. you're good to go. And the interesting thing, even though we have skillets here, so we don't have an oven, you said the simple thing to do is you can cook the yeah absolutely. In you know, oven. a lot of times grilled cheese or even just adding the ham, the turkey to it can be a little bit overwhelming. You do this on a sheet tray just like we have here with parchment paper or foil. Throw that in the oven about 325 for 10 to 12 minutes. What you're looking for is that cheese is to be nice and gooey and runny and it's already cooked. So all you're doing is looking for that cheese to melt and bread to be hot and, and toasty. And the cheese that you prefer, tell us it's about It's Gruyere. That. So Gruyere mm -hmm. is going to be a little bit more of a nutty. It's going to be similar to like a Swiss but more of an umami flavor. Um, that's just our favorite. If you can do smoked Gruyere in it, it just adds Ooh. another element Ooh, of flavor yeah. that's just amazing and just good old Texas toast. And never too much cheese. Never too much cheese. I mean, it's grilled cheese, right? So like you're it needs literally to have. sandwiching the meat in between the cheese, Absolutely. in between the bread. And this, this classic one? dish, which is once again, it's is called a, a cro croque madame, is the way we're going to finish it. So this is where it takes it up just a little bit of a notch. Um, you know, on the table, simple ingredients that a lot of people can just Ooh. work um, your flour, your milk, butter. Uh, nutmeg is a really key component into this dish. Just brings out that cheesy flavor to it. So what happens is you just make a good quality bechamel. And then um, from here, it's just a white cream sauce. Um, Fun fact about this, you add a little bit of nutmeg in here and it just amplifies that cheesiness, that cheesy See, I've flavor. I've never heard all. that. And nutmeg. you said to add that to, to uh, mac and cheese. Yeah, sometimes, so just to what? right here, this bechamel, you throw some cheese into it. Now you have a secondary sauce. This is a mother sauce. Mm -hmm. Have a secondary sauce called mm -hmm. a Mornay. And boom, now you can impress your friends with all these fancy turns <laughs> when you're just making mac and cheese and, and grilled cheese. And by the way, if you're intimidated by the name bechamel, it's nothing but a basically a roux with milk in it, right? Absolutely. Throw your roux in, make a nice quality roux, throw your milk, get it in a nice scorch. And then once that's there, you'll finish the salt, pepper, and nutmeg and you're good to go. Okay, and it's topped off with Wait, a, an egg one? on top. But you said it's the, that's the croque madame. Yeah, yeah. so but just with the sauce on it, it's gonna be a croque monsieur. You add the egg on top of it, it's croque madame. The reason being is the brim of the egg represents the lady's hat. So that's oh, why you can tell the difference between a monsieur and a madame and how they work. Okay. This egg, we can do sunny side up, we can flip it. It's really just kind of however you, you decide. Um, and we're gonna hold off on that, Jen. Let's just oh, move sorry. that one. Yeah, yep. Let's, yeah, yeah. Okay, and we're just gonna that. top it with this bechamel right on top so you can take this okay. and you're going to pour just ladle it kind of how that one looks Oh, yes. And other things okay. that you can use the bechamel for if you wanted to add cheese to it then. Yeah. And make a cheese dip. You'll be able to have like a cheesy, like, you know, kind of like how they do au jus dip for roast Leo? beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. You can do the same thing on the side. One of our favorites that we have on the table today is our biscuits and gravy. We do our gravy with the chorizo cream gravy. Um, mm -hmm. We've done it where we've topped chorizo on this as well. So just give it that South Texas, that feel, um, you know, everything just kind of comes together. Okay. Beautiful that's egg, good. Mike. Oh, thank you. How's this? this on Sunday brunch, I need a line cook. So if you're ever, ever, <laughs> you know, Sunday you're kind of hanging out, need something to do, you know, you come check us out. Oh, don't fall egg, don't fall egg. Speaking of Stay brunch, there. tell there us more goes. what's happening with Sticks and Stones. Yeah, yeah, Sticks yes. and Stones, we're open every Wednesday through Saturday, 12 to 9. Uh, Sundays, <laughs> brunch, 10 to 3. This week, we're on a limited schedule. Uh, Wednesday, only 12 to 4, and then Saturday and Sunday, just to give my team a little bit of time to spend with their family. Um, but if you come in, mention As Seen on SA Live, or talk about it, you get 10% off your entire meal. 10% off. Ooh, just for mentioning SA Live. All back, right. back to our question, what's your favorite uh, pie? Uh, favorite pie, you know, I'm like my mom does like she's here with me today. Um, <laughs> does like that, you know, ready-made crust and then like that instant pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. I don't know something about that. If I don't have that, you know, it's yes. like we're gonna have fits. Also, Dutch <laughs> apple pie is my favorite, so my girlfriend's gonna be making Ooh, that today. Dutch, yes. Mm. And I'm glad your mom's here today. All right, how do, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> awesome. And then, do you have any tips while he's? 
<laughs> enjoy that. Uh, do you have any tips for people when they're making yeah, their Thanksgiving? Yeah, uh, tip I learned the hard way, right? Being a chef, going through culinary school, we still all make little mistakes. Use a thermometer. Uh, there's nothing <laughs> worse than having your food ready up and then all of a sudden you cut into it and it's 120 degrees, yes. little pink, little raw. Uh, you know, so use it, temp it, take your bird out the day before, let it come to naturally in the fridge overnight. Um, use a brine. There's a lot of different methods that are just beautiful out there to cook a moist bird. When you pull a bird out of the oven, do you have to do it like a steak where you let it rest for a while? Uh, typically I do. I take okay. it out, let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you can do like a foil tent on it just to get, especially if you want that last little bit where the brown mired reaction to get a nice golden brown of your crust. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut in it too early because the skin hasn't fully set yet. Oh, uh, yeah. Interesting. I know that's where brown is. Okay. Again, real quick, where are you located so people can uh, visit So we're you. located in Leon Valley, more so yep. specific, 410 Bandera, Bandera and Wurzbach, across from the Ansira dealership, right behind an abandoned Sonic. All right, please go visit Leo, because he is amazing, him and his team, the food, oh, so delicious. All right, for more information on Sticks and Stone, go to our website, salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or scan that QR code on your screen. Well, many of us are going to be enjoying some pecan pie this week. It is a must-have Thanksgiving item. And if you love pecans, the American Indians in Texas at the Spanish Colonial Missions is hosting its seventh annual pecan harvest as we wrap up National Native American Heritage Month. And you can see the beautiful photos there. It's a place where you can celebrate some ancestral heritage recipes while learning about culture and traditions of Native American tribes. And joining us is, today is board member and actor, San Antonio Native, Jesse Borrego. Welcome, along sir. With Gloria Camarillo. Mario Vasquez, one of the founders. Welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. What have you brought with us, first of all? Because so many cultures are all about the food, and this looks mm. absolutely delicious. First of all, let me tell you that I am so happy to be here with both of you, beautiful people. And on behalf of the American Indians of Texas and my son, Ramon Vasquez, the executive director, I want to thank you for this invite. Well, you thank you. Most and what here. you have here is yes. um, his mother's creation, <laughs> his mother being me. <laughs> <laughs> you have pecans, mm -hmm. bison, bison. Uh, some bison, yes, yes. agave and blackberries. And this is your creation? Yes. This recipe right yes, here? Yes, it is. It's in a cookbook also. Oh my um, goodness. And those blackberries are absolutely gorgeous on there. And Jesse, I know you're not a meat eater, but you have something of your own bowl of goodies over there. What is Jesse feasting on? Jesse over, oh, Jesse has <laughs> another one of my creations in my <laughs> vegan soup. Yeah. And that, oh, there he goes. Ooh, yes. oh, he, <laughs> Jesse, let the other, don't do that. <laughs> well, what does he it told me to eat yeah. right out of the bowl. He gave me permission. Uh, blame, oh. blame me. <laughs> okay, I will. I'm the only vegan. No. <laughs> Y'all got the bison. But let isn't have that the beautiful? Yeah, and uh, it's yeah. very tasty. Um, it, it's made with uh, soy milk, mm. vegetable broth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all these uh, um, ingredients that you see there. So it's too many to mention. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, like uh, recipes and my prayers come from my spirit. So that's beautiful. how they get created. Oh, that's, that's how they get created. And um, we all enjoy, you know, our meals. Yes, and, and, and the uh, base being the pecans. The pecans. Mm. And then if yes. you want, just, oh, you garnish it, honey. Yes. That's oh, right. Yes. Okay, he's got it. <laughs> She's like, come on, Jesse. Jesse. Sorry, you put food in front of me, I'm going to eat. I do. And this is something yeah. very important to you. You're one of the longest serving board members, right? For nine years, I've been on the board. And the wonderful thing about these mm -hmm. events that we have, we have two of them. We have the Cactus Blossom in May, mm -hmm. but our Pecan Harvest, we try to feature chefs, mm -hmm. you know, local chefs. But, you know, whenever we do our food events, this gives us a chance to talk about the programming mm -hmm. and the services mm -hmm. that AIT does in the community. Yes. Health and wellness. Mm -hmm. We work a lot with the Bear County Juvenile Court mm -hmm. to intercede mm -hmm. and to try to get some of our native community. A lot of us here in the Southwest, we identify with our native culture. Mm -hmm. Well, the families that started AIT mm -hmm. are part of the UNESCO sites, right. the Spanish colonial missions. Exactly. So all of those original Tejano families mm -hmm. are part of our makeup in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. 
So this organization tried to exemplify that and celebrate Native culture, especially through food. Right. The event coming up on the third, and needless to say, food. <laughs> and what else is going to be there? Well, we'll also have some cultural programming. We'll have some singing, right. some dancing. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a lot about the art that mm -hmm. AIT's uh, Arts Indigenous Arts programming has been doing, and we talk a lot about what the American Indians of Texas. Right. And Jesse, let's not forget about the pie. Oh, oh yeah, we got to clean up the pie. Pecans, pecan, uh, and pecans. pecans. This beautiful traditional pie <gasps> Look at was that. made for us. It will be also at the pecan harvest is made by one of our board members uh, wives her name is Angie Angie thank Angie. you Angie shout that, out to uh, Angie gracias. all right and this is something you grew up with the uh, pecans and and pecans and, 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 and more pecans and more pecans and more and more pecans and more pecans because they are delicious and this <laughs> bison yeah. is absolutely fantastic it's, once again yes, the pecan no. harvest is going to be taking place December 3rd from 6 to 9 p.m. at Progresso Hall located at 1306 Guadalupe Street for more information, head over to SA Live and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank you so very much. Thanks. Delicious, Thank my you dear. Both. Yes. Great way to start Thank off you. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thank Still ahead on SA Live, who couldn't use some extra cash for all your Christmas holiday shopping? One SA Live viewer is about to win $500. How you can enter for your chance to win. But first, after the feast, you gotta have some fun. We're showing you some DIY games you can play with the family during the holiday get-togethers. It's next on SA Live. 